Hello everyone, and welcome to our final installment of the TLO uh, RPGX Academy series. Once again, this is Jensen. Um, today we're going to go over the blue shirt departments, the medical and science departments. Um, we're going to start with the medical department today, so let's go ahead and get our names set up. We'll say name, carrot 4, CMO, Jensen. Go to class medical. We'll put a rank anywhere between lieutenant junior grade uh, to lieutenant commander. Uh, for purposes of today, we'll say Lieutenant, and we'll change our uniform, Model Culhane, Main, Teal. And we'll say Tab, and voila, we're all set up. So, let's get down to Sick Bay, which is obviously the, uh, home of the medical department. And as we're going to Sick Bay, let's talk a bit about the, uh, function of the medical department. Obviously, the medical department, um, is charged with, uh, tending to the biological needs of the crew, um, that includes um, both uh, treatment and prevention. Um, so you may see a doctor from anything from normal checkups to um, you've been hit by a phaser blast, oh no, you must have surgery, etc. Um, now in RPs, a lot of people I think tend to find the CMO position really boring because COs sometimes will neglect the position. I myself really enjoy the medical department. It's one of my favorite positions along with the science department. Um, it's very likely that you'll have a lot of downtime as a CMO uh, before you, you are called in by the plot. But when you are called in by the plot, you usually have a myriad of things to do. Um, so it's really important that we discuss in this lesson how to really be a good blue shirt in, bo in both uh, departments um, so that you can really contribute to the plot with, um, without, uh, without being disruptive. <coughs> Uh, much of your free time, again, you'll be spending here in sick bay. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can do here in the middle of downtime that I don't think most people think about. Um, for instance, you know, you, you'll have some patients come in from time to time, even if you don't have playing characters coming in as patients, you may have NPCs that y you can just pretend like you're giving an examination or you're giving medical uh, advice. Um, and I usually do that via local chat, which is, again, the why, um, especially if there are more than, say, five or six people on the server, because it does tend to be text-intensive, um, but it really does kind of uh, really make yourself feel more involved in the life of the starship, um, and it can be very interesting uh, for uh, the crew around the deck um, to watch that conversation. Um, it's a great way to incorporate yourself into the plot. Um, there are a lot of little duties that a doctor needs to do, like filling hypo sprays with the appropriate compounds. A cool list of compounds is actually found in one of my medical guides. Um, I'll link you to that in the Academy Reference section, so definitely check that out. Um, if you print off a list of those compounds, that, that will help you immensely as a CMO, so you know what injection to give out and how much, and you can really incorporate that into the way you RP to make yourself a better doctor. Um, you could also look over latest um, virus cultures or samples or various things you're doing in the lab. I think a lot of people tend to forget that uh, being CMO isn't always just about treating the crew. They're also sort of the biologist on board. They may be doing studies on their own. They may be actually looking at um, a sort of organism that we found on an away mission um, and examining it. Uh, etc. Uh, and you could also go to the cargo bay and restock on supplies and see how everyone's doing. There are a lot of different little things that you can do as a CMO to fill the gap between when you're really needed by the plot and when you're not. At the end of the day, just remember that although this is the 24th century, um, the medical profession in essence is very much the same as today. So if you think about what would a doctor today do, and just apply that to role play, but just replace some of the terms with 24th century terms, then you'll be A-OK -okay for the most part. <clears throat> now naturally you won't have downtime all the time, unless you have a very unfortunate CO. Um, so there's always a good chance that you know your services are going to be called upon. This is how I recommend you handle, say, a situation where you have a crew member who's come in with uh, moderate to severe injuries who needs treatment. Oh my, my game is very laggy today. Please bear with us. All right, so let's pretend the patient's here. Let me set an entity if my game will allow me. Okay, it's not going to. Let's use our imaginations. All right, here is imaginary patient, Mr. Arius. Oh, oh, oh. The first thing we want to do is diagnose his condition. We scan him with a tricorder, and then assess the situation. Let's say he's been hit by plasma burns. 
we can say that he has level 2 plasma burns, he's got a moderate concussion, and some minor internal bleeding. The next step is to assess his needs. Um, right now, he's probably in pain, so he's probably going to need some anaprovalin. Uh, he has internal bleeding that needs to be taken care of right away and will require minor surgery. Uh, let's go to minor surgery. Great way to um, act out surgeries. Grab your dermal regenerator, say, nurse, laser scalpel, and use the dermal regenerator as a laser scalpel. Make an incision, woo woo, for a little while. I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, obviously, before you want to make the incision, you'll want to sedate him first, just maybe. And so once you've administered a sedative, then get out the uh, laser scalpel, boo, 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 yes, quite. Um, and once it's open, then, you know, say, nurse, I need a vascular regenerator, um, and just kind of target his um, imaginary, you know, areas that are bleeding and cut those off, and then take care of what's in there with the fluid buildup, and if you need to repair any art arteries, or anything like that, go ahead and do that in the surgical setting. Then uh, get the dermal regenerator, patch him back up, run an intensive battery of scans, take note of his condition, and then give him a couple of hypo sprays to help him with the pain once he wakes up, and maybe some bitamucin, which is very good for trauma injuries, which is in my list of, um, which is my list of compounds. This done without a time lapse maybe takes a minute or two, and I think it really adds to the plot. Again, try and do this via local chat unless it's kind of important, or you have just a very few people in the RPs. And that just adds a very good, I think, professional element of the RP. Um, sometimes your injuries won't be as severe. Sometimes it'll just be a headache, in which case maybe a scan, a brief conversation about, you know, how long have you been sleeping? What have you been eating? Blah, 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 and then giving them an injection. Um, sometimes it's just a checkup, giving them the scan and once over and seeing how they are. There are a variety of different things, just kind of feel the mood of the situation and, um, and uh, just do what it takes to um, resolve it in a very professional manner. Um, now, medics should also be aware that when the ship encounters a new form of life, be it a life form, a virus, or a microorganism, that you are the biological specialist on board the ship and you need to act like it during an RP. Um, so there's always a lot of new opportunities when that happens in an RP. Also, one thing you should definitely avoid is shipwide checkups. Now, unfortunately, this does happen on occasion. Let me just tell you, never do a shipwide checkup. Um, but if you ever must do one, make sure you call people down one at a time and don't do anything during a red alert or during a plot critical moment. This actually has happened, sadly. Also. Don't kill someone off or diagnose them with a terminal illness unless it's reasonable and called for in the plot. Uh, generally, you shouldn't do that unless you have the CO or the character's approval. Again, use your own judgment there because you also don't want the people who just want to say, I have to go, so I'm going to kill myself, ah, which would disrupt the RP. So, um, This is basically really all the pointers that I can really give you. I mean, being, being a doctor is a very interesting position and a very free-flowing one and very difficult for me to advise you on. Uh, but definitely check out that list of uh, medical supplements. I think you'll find it very useful and um, uh, a very good resource for really peppering your RP with professionalism. All right, let's turn over to the final department that we're going to cover. That's going to be the science department. Let's change our class to science. I'm already in the blue uniform, so I don't need to worry about that. But I am going to change my name to CSO Jensen. Right oh Well, why don't we head down to Astrometrics, which is really the hub of the science department. Most maps have a separate science lab and Astrometrics. Unfortunately, this map doesn't. Um, scientists tend to use the Astrometrics lab more for stellar scans when they're looking at a stellar phenomena, when they're plotting courses, um, or when they're just generally trying to get kind of a longer range idea of what's going on in the system. like so. There you are, a very good astrometric chart. Um, now, playing a CSO, that again, this is a highly general, general role, and really what you do as a CSO largely depends on the plot, but also it, it can depend on if an ops officer is present. Generally, if an ops officer is present, a CSO's duty is, is more confined to um, taking scans and doing analyses of data, um, looking at, you know, just general things, plotting course, looking at astrometrics and stellar charts, recalibrating systems, etc. But when an ops officer isn't present, the CO is very much relying on you to relay sensor data, 
um, like, sir, there's this ship in the area, sir, there's that ship in the area, sir, this ship is changing course, sir, I'm reading three planets, blah, 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 blah. Um, generally when an ops officer is present, he'll do that, especially with more of the ship aspect, but it's really kind of your job when he's not there to be basically the liaison between the sensors and the commanding officer. So please make sure to, you know, do that within the confines of your RP. Um, I tend to find that a CSO generally has 10 million things to do or hardly anything to do, and that can be very difficult um, on either extreme. Uh, when you have nothing to do, really, from a plot standpoint, try and find something to really occupy your attention. Perhaps, oh, I picked up a quasar, or um, a pulsar, or a comet, or something of that nature. And maybe asking the captain, Captain, can I go down to the science lab and examine this, and run some examinations, and really just get your character involved in the RP, and maybe, you know, have some fascinating tidbits for the captain, you know, uh, to bring to him. Um, if you are at the center of the plot, you're really going to have to prioritize what you do, um, focusing mostly on what's important to the plot, not necessarily to the, your character. You may have this wonderful little pulsar thing going on, but if the CO really needs you to introduce a major element of the plot and really explain it, you need to turn your attention there. Um, the CSO is very much, in my opinion, a bridge between the CO, his plot, and its implementation. Most of the time, if you're implementing something major into the plot, you usually do it through the CSO, at least in my opinion. Um, a little bit different if an ops officer is present, but generally the CSO. Because the CSO is going to be the one who's basically informing the crew that this, this or that is happening on sensors, um, and what's going on, etc. Um, and you're basically... Your job is basically to keep the crew uh, informed about what is happening outside the ship. Um, one final thing that you should be aware of... Oh, I have not tapped this. Aha! Yes, the Astrometrics Rab is in fact the Shrine of St. Jensen. Please venerate him when you are indeed in the Science Lab. Um, and I think this really covers the role of the Science Officer again. If you have nothing to do, do some reports, find something interesting on sensors, or analyze the data that you've retrieved. I know that sounds boring, but frankly, you can have a whole lot of fun about it, and as I, most people know, I love playing a science officer. Um, again, it, the blue shirt positions are very hard to teach. They're just something you have to kind of learn in time, um, and really just kind of get the feel for, but once you get the feel for it, they are very exciting positions. Um, that have very few limitations and can really add dramatically to the plot. Well, this ends our RPGX course. Um, thank you very much for taking this course. I hope it's been very beneficial. Um, going on from here, uh, you need to PM an Academy instructor uh, for a final exam uh, copy. And once you've taken and passed that final exam, then you can proceed um, to um, getting further on the path to graduation. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this course or anything else, please PM Jensen, and um, I'd be happy to hear any suggestions you might have. Um, again, I hope this was very helpful, and I look forward to seeing you on the server. Tally-ho!